Hello and welcome to 4 Sound. My name is Anton and today we're going to talk about podcasts. I've been doing commercial radio for 10 years. I've been doing some podcasts as well. Uh, and the ideas and uh, the tips and pointers that you get here today, uh, there's no musts or like a, a book of how to do commercial radio. These are just general ideas. We're going to talk about what to think about, some pointers regarding the podcast idea. We're going to talk about what gear you have to have, what you need to make sense or make a, a reality of your idea. Uh, we're gonna just uh, dip the toe in sound and acoustics and also uh, with post-production. But first things first, you have an idea of a podcast. Great. Then you need to figure out how to do it. One idea I always think about when I do commercial radio is that I try to visualize who I'm talking to. And I think that's the first thing that you have to set before you even press record. Who are you talking to? Use the word you when you're talking to a person instead of like, like you, like one person rather than I'm talking to the entire world. No, you're not. You're talking to one person. <laughs> in fact, in commercial radio, some people actually use dolls. They have like a mannequin or a doll that they like seller tape or gaffer tape to the wall in the studio and use that as a reference. Like, I'm talking to you right now. But that's actually a kind of a good uh, idea. Is it a woman 35 years old? Is it guys 16 year olds? Have one person and visualize that person when you're doing your podcast. And also, what's the arch? of the show or the podcast. How does it start? What's the middle and what's the end? And as I said, there's no, I mean, there's no, these are just guidelines to quote the guys from Pirates of the Caribbean. You can do it however you want, but it's good to be consistent, to start it in the same way, to have uh, the general middle the same with different variations, obviously if you have guests, and then end it in the same way. And be consistent uh, with when it comes to time as well. One guideline is no more than 45 minutes because that's a good amount of time for one podcast. There are micro podcasts out there of 10 minutes and so on. Do whatever blows your hair back, but just be consistent or try to be consistent. And consistency is also good to think about when it comes to the release of the podcast. Is it every week? Is it every day? Is it every other week? Have it the same day, the same time to be consistent. And please just trust me when I say this, it takes a lot of time to create a successful podcast. So just be patient. And also when you are physically recording your podcast, just take it easy, take it slow. You know that you could do a lot of things in post-production. So don't sweat it, just have fun. If you do something wrong, you can still correct it. Be patient, be consistent, and be bloody talented. And let's talk a little bit about gear. If you're wondering what we're recording with right now in this studio is, is a boom mic, which is uh, uh, not really good for a, a podcast per se, because then you just want the sound to be really good. You want a mic really close to your mouth uh, and uh, you don't want the uh, room acoustic that's uh, in here. But we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. Let's talk about the podcast gear that you need. If you're going to do your recording or your podcast all by your lonesome, you just need the one microphone. Then the simplest and quickest way to get started is to use a USB one. We've chosen the Apogee Mic Plus, it's an excellent mic. Really quick to get started, you just hook it up via USB cable, start your recording software. If it's Pro Tools, GarageBand or whatever, press record and you're good to go. And if you want more options and more control, or if you're interviewing someone in your podcast, I recommend an external sound card. We've chosen right here the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. The great thing with this, or an external sound card in general, is that you have several inputs. You can have two microphones. And uh, if you're wondering what this is, we've chosen now the Aston Stealth, with, which is a fantastic microphone. There's a link below to a separate video about this microphone. Check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. But the great thing also uh, with having two separate microphones, two separate channels, is that it's so much simpler to make everything sound fantastic in post-production. And if you want to take your podcasting to a completely different level, here's the Rodecaster Pro. And I just have to say, I've been playing with this now for just 60 to 90 seconds and I absolutely love it. It has four separate inputs, so you can interview three people at the same time. You can do phone interviews, you can have a computer hooked up if you want music from that, you can have Bluetooth everything and you have what we call in commercial radio 
hotkeys so you can have uh, sound effects if you want. Uh, and the cool thing about this particular product is also that it's a standalone product, which means that if you're in the field, you're at location, you don't necessarily need a laptop with you. You can record into a micro SD card. So uh, this is by far the coolest podcasting product I've seen in a really long time. So let's try it out, shall we? Okay, everybody. Hey, and welcome here to the Four Sound Studio. My name is Anton, and with me now I have my esteemed guest, Christian Anderson, welcome. Thank you. Thank Christian you. Even. Christian, even. Chris, oh. The thing is, we played together for, like, I think it's about like seven, eight years or something, and I still don't know that your name is Christian. I think it's absolutely weird. It's kind of scary. Ah, yeah, yeah. It a, is. A horrible segue to use one of these hotkeys, but still, it's like, uh, uh, I don't know. Is, is, is it a joke? Yeah. I don't know. Or is it just an awkward moment? It could actually be both. Uh, but but the thing is oh, that, that sounded like an old like bicycle wheel that's like <laughs> that's that's birds? scary too. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that I absolutely love this. I want one, Chris. You've been uh, working with music and uh, recording stuff for a really long time. We, uh, we're talking about podcasts. We're talking about the, the products that you can use and everything. But with the sound, because now uh, when we started shooting this video, we used the um, Aston Starlight, a boom yeah. mic, yep. and that creates a more room, like ambient sound, right? You get yep. the reverb from the room. Yeah, sure. And now when we use these, the, the Aston Stealth, it's much more closer and much more preferable if you have a podcast, because then you come really close to the one listener listening, right? Like this. Exactly. Too much. Yeah. Too okay. much. Thank you. Scary. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's really important when you when you record something that people sh uh, actually should uh, just listen to without a picture. It's really, really... I have a question. Yes. Uh, speaking of sound and doing stuff professionally, you knew that we were supposed to shoot this now, talking about sound, how, how to perfect it, to, to come close to this, and you chewing gum. Sorry, man. Can you spit it out, please? Yeah, I can. Thank you. I swallowed it. <laughs> Did you yep. really? Yeah, I did, I did. That's just wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay, but anyway, sound-wise. Yeah. Now we talked about uh, how to do a podcast. Who yeah. are you talking to? Let's sum up a little bit. Who are you talking to? You have to know that before you start. What's yeah, and, and you mean who are you talking to who isn't in the interview, right? Yes, I mean, of course, who's, of course. Who's listening? Who's yeah. listening? Yeah. Who are you talking to? Because <coughs> podcasts, I think, should be uh, personal. You're talking yeah. to someone like, hey, welcome here to my little show, my little thing, whatever. Uh, and also, uh, what's the arch of the podcast? What's the beginning like? What's the middle like? And how does it end? So you have a plan. Yeah. Uh, but also sound-wise, because you have all the gear. You have external sound cards. If you want multiple inputs, you can have a USB mic if you're just by yourself. And you can have a beast, fun beast, like this. But regarding sound in general, what should people think about? Uh, I mean, the environment is super important if you're gonna uh, talk or record anything uh, in a room or whatever, because you're always bringing in the room to the recording. So, I mean, if I move backwards from this microphone, you could probably hear some more like ambition sounds. Yeah, and, and then, and then, for instance, if I talk, if you, this is actually yeah, a good sure. uh, example. I'll, I'll raise your mic. Like yeah, this. sure. So I, I will be back here. Then you hear a lot of the room. Yeah. Yeah, and, and if you I come closer like this, and I put the volume down, yeah, because then my voice is closer to the microphone and to the uh, console that you're recording into, uh, so that will make yeah the sound closer to you. So that's really important, and and I mean I really and also really the quality is better. I mean yeah. if if you get if you're really close to the mic, you can eliminate all the other room sounds, or yeah, sure. or you could you could put the gain down. So that's super important, and I mean a really really easy way to to do your sound check if you're doing a podcast is just go into the room. Clap a couple of times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. And then Sorry. you hear the the uh, the ambience of the room, and and then you can probably find a spot in the room, or we like we have some curtains and and soft materials around us, which actually dampens the uh, location and stuff like that. So, because it gets like disturbing if you uh, listen to something for forty five minutes or whatever, it's gonna be kind of annoying if you have like a uh, strong ambient sound like this and i mean the ambient sound is almost as loud as my voice yeah so uh so that's that's a, a key thing of every recording yeah of course when you yeah exactly even if you record music or a podcast or whatever you record 
the environment is uh, going to be with you or against you <laughs> in a way. Exactly. And and what people should know is that sound bounces really really easily. So even though if you have one of uh, like a, a screen that doesn't necessarily help you uh, to create like a studio environment. There's still a lot of ways that the sound can bounce. So yeah. if you're going to do a podcast at home or something before you uh, in front of your computer, be sure that you have something dampening behind you as well. Like preferably all around you, right? I mean the uh, I, I would probably say I mean if you are standing in the middle of a room, uh, I would probably say that the ceiling and the floor is actually the biggest problem exactly. because they're hitting everywhere. So uh, you should probably find yeah a location with like some soft uh, pillows or whatever, so you can kind of create your own. I mean, you've done it. Yeah. Uh, in uh, at your home in your kitchen right yeah when, yeah in my kitchen horrible horrible yeah. setting uh, i mean go. it's it's really really difficult and also a tip for you who want to do a podcast have headphones i can't stress that enough because then you hear everything that's you, that you are recording and in this particular um example i can hear how chris is talking and, and i hear the volume of my sound effects and although when you're recording on a beast like this with separate channels you can always in post try and save you can actually gain up a little bit if uh, the other person or yourself was a little bit too far from the microphone and stuff like that uh, but it's always easier to have headphones on so you know what you're doing yeah. right but also uh, i promised in the beginning of this video that we would uh, like uh, grace the subject of post production do you have any tips there yeah for sure i mean uh, if you've been out on the field recording with a hand recorder or or actually through a sound card or whatever but the environment hasn't been so good uh, that is actual, uh, actually uh, repairable. So if you lift like the sound into your Pro Tools software, there's several plugins that can help you out. Yeah, I, uh, for instance, use uh, Isotope uh, RX7 for, for, for this, because I'm editing this as well, and uh, when I'm out in the field and doing stuff. Uh, because th there are tons of software out there, but that, that's actually a tip to, to invest in a good software that could actually, uh, like for instance, in this room, uh, there's a little bit of reverb. If you want that out, uh, that software can take care of that. Th there's tons out there, so, so check that out. But that's uh, also a tip from w uh, when you have the final product, when you have everything, uh, before you press send, before you post it out there, make sure it sounds uh, good. Because if you think it sounds good, the odds are it does sound good, right? Cool. All right. Well, uh, that's it for the podcast. I hope you've uh, learned something. And uh, these are not rules. These are mer merely tips uh, from an old commercial radio DJ that doesn't have a job anymore there. But maybe they'll take me back sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love this machine. That's all for now. <laughs> take care. And if you want the videos, as I said, about these microphones, there's a link down below. Till next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Till next time. Was <laughs> <laughs>